With the price of entry-level 3D printers continually dropping and the hardware and software getting better all the time, there's really never been a better time to get into 3D printing. Now, although I did run a poll on my channel a while back and a lot of you guys do have one and in some cases many 3D printers, it's at least daily where I get a comment of someone saying, hey, I'm looking at getting my first printer or hey, I just picked up my first 3D printer, which is really exciting to me because that ensures that this space is continually going to be evolving and that all of these different new applications that maybe the people already involved with additive manufacturing or 3D printing never thought of will now be thought of. And so it will allow this technology, the filaments, the software, the hardware to evolve well beyond where it's currently at. Now there's no denying that 3D printing has a level of learning curve, especially depending on what your desired goal or outcome is. And there's nothing worse to me than seeing someone that gets a 3D printer and gets incredibly frustrated early on for whatever reasoning and decides to write off the technology and just decide, hey, I guess 3D printing is not where I thought it was at or I guess 3D printing is just not for me. So the other night I was brainstorming and I came up with a top five list of tips and recommendations for those that are thinking of getting their first 3D printer or are just getting their 3D printer that I wish maybe I had known or that I think could help to remove or ease some of this initial frustration and ensure that you are set up for success from the beginning. Although some of the things on this list may seem obvious, I can guarantee you from the feedback I get almost daily that these are things that are constantly ignored. And although this is gonna be targeted for those that are fresh into 3D printing, I would love to hear from you guys as well that have been 3D printing for some period of time and hear what your recommended tips and tricks are for those that are new to 3D printing to ensure that they are successful. So be sure to leave those, uh, those tips in the comments down below. Last thing I'm really excited about is that the official ModBot Army Discord has been opened to everybody. It was initially something I put together for patrons to be able to kind of hang out, ask questions, talk, and things like that, but I did a poll in the Discord and everyone kind of agreed that it would be awesome to open this up to allow more people in to contribute to the conversations, ask questions, show off their, their, show off their different things that they're working on. So it is a major work in progress because it's something that's still new to me and I have ran Discords before, but certainly not one that's like a community that we're trying to kind of put together here. So be sure to jump over there. Links will be in the description. Say hello. There's a room currently uh, for a general chat room. There's a room for showing off your prints and your projects and there is a room uh, asking for help. So I'm incredibly excited about that and I hope to see you all over there. All right, but you guys are here for the tips because that is what the title of this video is. So without further ado, let's get right into today's video. So the first tip is around modding your 3D printer. Now, most people that pick up a 3D printer do a bit of research initially. This isn't typically a purchase like going out and deciding what you want for lunch. They wanna make sure that the printer is within their budget, that it has the features that they think that they want or need, that it's the build volume that you're going to want so that way it will even work for your intended application or applications. And that's great. You should absolutely do your research, make sure you know what you're getting yourself into as much as possible to, uh, you know, again, get a machine that will work for what you want. Well, along with that, a lot of people also watch a bunch of videos on upgrading the machine that they're planning on getting. So for example, we'll take the Creality Ender 3. They might have decided, hey, I want the Ender 3. I see all these videos over on ModBot's channel or on any other channel that uh, is also doing 3D printer upgrades and mods and say, you know, I want to get the all metal hot end. I want to get a direct drive. I want to get a BL touch. And I'll often see comments in the description saying, hey, I just got an Ender 3. It's coming in the mail. I also picked up a BL, you know, all those things, BL touch, extruder and an all metal hot end to go along with that. Now getting all these upgrades is fine. Where the issue lies is somebody will get this machine, they'll open it up, while they're assembling it, they'll throw on the all metal hot end, they'll throw on the extruder, they'll throw on the BL touch, and granted again, this is someone that's fresh with 3D printing, they'll put it together and all the time I'll see comments or messages saying, hey, I've got this machine and uh, I installed you know, this specific upgrade to it and it doesn't seem to be working. And I say, okay, well, you know, how was things working before you did this? Were you running into any issues? And the response will be, I don't know. I, I upgraded it out of the box. I, I had the part, I wanted to just get it out of the way right away. And I can certainly understand that mindset to kind of till, uh, kill two birds with one stone to you know, not have to disassemble it later on, but don't, especially if you are new to 3D printing Absolutely, tip number one, very important, is to use your machine stock from for the beginning. Make sure that uh, you've built up some familiarity with the machine, that you're getting some successful prints, and that you know everything else is dialed in, and then you can think about upgrading you know, the hot end or the extruder or the BL touch. But 
This will save you a ton of headache and I cannot stress the importance of making sure you understand your machine stock before doing all sorts of hacks and tweaks to it. Tip number two is to properly level your bed and learn how to level your bed. Now, this might be a absolute tip in a year or two years, depending on how good automatic bed leveling gets. However, as of right now in 2021, most low cost 3D printers still use manual bed leveling. And in my opinion, manual bed leveling is actually far superior than automatic bed leveling that hasn't been implemented properly. I would much rather be able to manually set something and know that it is just me that needs to set these things than trying to fight with firmware, trying to fight with software. Now again, I don't think auto bed leveling is a bad thing, but I've seen it implemented poorly many times where I would just rather throw it out and manual level the bed. And bed leveling is arguably the most important calibration thing that you do for your 3D printer. It is the it is the biggest factor that will determine the difference between a successful 3D print and a failed 3D print. Now there are lots of great videos already out there on how to uh, level your bed. I've debated multiple times to kind of go into detail on uh, what to look out for or kind of how I approach it. And um, if I do that, great, I link you guys. But in the meantime, my buddy Chuck over on Filament Friday uh, 3D printing channel has an awesome video on the Ender 3 on how to level that using the manual bed leveling. And I'm sure that you could pretty easily incorporate that to a similar machine. So I will link that in the description of this video so that way you can check it out. And my goal with bed leveling certainly isn't to scare you because it's one of those things that once you learn it, it becomes second nature. I mean, I can level a bed just almost via my eyeball and it's not something that's difficult uh, once you learn again what you're looking for, what the, the correct distance is for certain materials or certain build surfaces, but it's one of those things that I think gets heavily overlooked and you need to take the time to make sure that your bed is leveled properly and that you have an idea of what you are looking for when leveling your bed. Tip number three is watch your first layer go down. This is as important as tip number two, which is making sure that your bed is leveled because with FDM or extrusion based 3D printing, since each layer builds off of the previous layer, if you do not have a solid foundation, the rest of the print really is not going to matter because it's going to come off the bed, it's going to be a spaghetti mess. So watching that first layer go down is incredibly important. And even myself, and I, I couldn't tell you how many prints I've done, it's hundreds or possibly thousands over the past six years, I still watch that first layer go down because I had one experience, maybe two experiences where I got too confident in my printer's leveling or in its ability to always just work and disaster struck. Luckily, it was nothing that wasn't repairable, but again, that first layer is so important. The first layer will show you if your bed is currently leveled, if it's come unleveled, if your printer is under extruding, or if your material is warping for some reason. So watching that first layer will help you very early on detect so many different things that taking that one to two minutes to just make sure everything's good to go before walking away is such a good habit to get uh, used to early on. Now, do I still have print failures? Absolutely. I. I will be the first to admit that even with the amount of time I've been printing, whether it's a slicer thing, whether it's a hardware thing, whatever, I still have 3D printing failures. There, that is inevitable, that will happen. Get used to that happening. However, I've helped to really mitigate that and just about, just about remove any type of catastrophic failure from just this simple, simple step. All right, so tip number four is to start with a simple material like PLA. With 3D printing constantly growing and evolving, there is now a massive catalog of 3D printing materials that you can print with. And this is awesome. We cover them all the time on the channel. I'll show you guys the material that's new or new to me at least. And we'll go over kind of what my experience is like printing it, best, uh, best practices for printing with that material and why you might want to print it. With that being said, a lot of these materials have a lot of additional factors that you need to consider when printing with them. Things like, does it need an enclosure? Does it need an all metal hot end? Is it abrasive? Is it prone to absorbing moisture? All of these things are things that you will have to consider. And when you are learning 3D printing, there's already so many other factors and things to just start getting used to that I think you're doing yourself a disservice from trying to jump into these materials fresh with a new, new machine. Even if ultimately you got the printer to be able to print with these materials, you should still start off with a material, something like PLA, to at least get your bearings and kind of dip your feet in the water. 
PLA is a cornstarch based material that is awesome to print with because it comes in a wide range of colors. It's got very low odor. It is uh, got minimal warping problems. It's got very little issues with absorbing moisture. So it just, it checks all the boxes of things that you want in a material that you are trying to learn this technology with and learn what the different slicer settings mean and learn how to use your printer. So uh, it, it is a really good place. And when I was writing this up, I couldn't help think of when I used to skateboard to me, like, when I, when I used to skateboard, I saw all my friends doing these super cool tricks and I couldn't do any of them. And in skateboarding, most tricks, you have to basically pop off of the ground to do a trick, whether it's a kickflip or a uh, uh, tray flip or anything like that. And so think of PLA as like your Ollie, which is basically just getting off the ground, popping, popping off the ground to do a little jump. And sure, maybe your end goal is to do a kickflip because that's what you need to do, but you can't do that kickflip until you learn how to Ollie. And if you don't understand skateboarding, you will probably not get that reference. But for those that you to do, you will understand what I'm talking about. And maybe that will make a little bit more sense as to why I'm recommending this step. And tip number five is to start with the default profiles. Now, when I, when I got into 3D printing in 2014, the software left a lot to be desired. And even using the stuff that was made by the specific manufacturer for this specific material left me with results that by today's standards would have been pretty terrible. However, the slicing software has evolved drastically since then. And it doesn't matter whether you're using, um, you know, Cura or Idea Maker or uh, Prusa Slicer or Matter Control or Simplify or whatever. There's a lot of different slicers out there. I've currently been using Cura because it, I've used it for a long time and it works quite well. But all of these slicers are at a point where the default settings are pretty damn good and they are a very solid place for anyone to start out with and just use those. Don't try tweaking everything, but start off with those default parameters. Similar to the first tip where I see people that are doing these mods before even checking to see whether their printer is uh, operating correctly stock, all the time I'll have people reach out and there will be something going on with their prints and um, I will ask them as a, as a kind of a troubleshooting thing, you know, hey, well, set your, reset your slicer or, or create a new profile in your slicer that has nothing changed. And, I cannot tell you how many times that has solved the problem. It's something that got tweaked within the slicer that's throwing things off. Maybe your flow rate got adjusted. Maybe your cooling got turned off, whatever it is. But the slicer, there, there is, you have the rest of your 3D printing uh, career or your 3D printing you know, venture to learn what each and every single one of the slicer settings means and does if that's your desire. But starting off with, start simple. Don't play around with the settings that you don't need to play around with. And those have been my five 3D printing beginner tips to ensure your success from the beginning. I can guarantee you that if you follow these five steps or at least take them into consideration, you will be way better off than not doing these things or doing the opposite of what I say in this video. I love this technology and it makes me so excited still seeing new faces in this space that are doing such cool things. And again, it makes me really sad or disheartened when I see people that get into this uh, technology and do not listen to these tips, do kind of the opposite of them, and then just decide, oh, 3D printing, 3D printing sucks, or 3D printing is not for me. And it's it's not that, it's just that you didn't do things in a way that, that even allows you to be successful. So I, I hope this was useful. I'm sure this was useful. I know based off the feedback I've gotten that there are uh, a lot of people out there that need to hear these things. So please let me know in the comments down below what your thoughts are. Like I said at the beginning of this video, if you have been printing for a while and you've got any other tips, tricks, recommendations, please also share those in the comments down below. The conversation in the comments in a lot of videos has become awesome. And also you can take that over to the Discord uh, and we can kind of continue the conversation there. So. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video every single Saturday, so there is always fresh content coming your way. If you do wanna support the channel furthermore, I will also place links in the description over to my Patreon where there are some really awesome rewards. And a huge thank you to all of my current Patreon supporters. I really appreciate each and every one of you. It makes a huge difference in allowing me to truly dedicate more time to creating content for you guys, which is something that I love to do. And I enjoy seeing you guys come back each and every week and uh, watching these videos and sh commenting and just giving me feedback on them. So on that note, this has been Daniel from ModBot and I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace guys.